we have a official UI library from Next.js, I think you don't need any other UI library if you are using this one. This comes with Tailwind CSS built-in. It also has an integration with Iconis. So if you if you don't know Icon, what Iconis is, Iconis consists of more than 11,000 icons. So that consists almost all the open source icon library from various authors. This library also has a pretty good form validation solution. It also has all the essential component that you need to build your next billion dollar startup. So let's see how we can start using this beautiful UI library. So uh, what you have to do is you have to go to ui.nux.com. Link would be in the description. What you first see is the preview of all the component that they have. And you can pretty much see that they are using Tailwind and also they are using a headless UI provided by Tailwind. This is a beautifully crafted UI library. If you are building a dashboard kind of a interface, what better way would be to start the application than using the Next UI, which gives you almost all the uh, UI component that you would be needing uh, with the functionalities as well. This video would be specifically focused toward how you can use this library rather than create a create something with it so let's see what is the installation process so i'll be going to the get started and would we'll be adding it to our fresh and uh, next installation and uh in this case we would be using a bun not the uh, node package manager so let's go to our favorite terminal and let's uh, start creating the project so what i'd be doing i'd be writing the command the famous command for creating next project npx nuxy in it and then i would name it a next three ui so now it will ask you for uh, your package manager we are going to be choosing bun let's wait for the installation as you can see the installation is done and it is saying asking us uh, for the initializing the github repository which i uh, will uh, press enter because i would like to add this repository in the description anyway let's uh, move to the folder and now let's run bun run dev so i'll not run it here instead what i'll do i'll open it in vs code and then i will open the terminal integrated terminal and then i will run it here bun run dev so it should run our application in port 3000 so let's open localhost port 3000 yeah it is working so now what we'll do we will add the next ui uh, library so let's do that. So to install the package using bun, I guess you have to do bun add and then next UI and it would be a dev dependency. So let's add the flag. So as you can see, our dependency has been installed. You can verify it by going to the package.json and you can see next UI and the current version that uh, at the time of this recording video is 2.8.1. So yeah, I guess we are pretty much good to go now in the next a config file add a new modules in a uh, module should be array and you have to write next hq slash ui or is it yeah it's next ui now add that that is pretty much it now let's run it next website so what i'll do i'll remove this one and i will just you know try to print something so i would go to app and then i'll just write h1 so as you can see, we have a black background and we have a some so we have a different font than what you uh, would be having in your normal Next installation. That is because uh, the Next UI uses Tailwind under the hood, and when you add the Next UI in your Next three project, it automatically add uh, a few dependency. Uh, that you might be needing for example it depends on the tailwind it also adds the the next uh, color component which is used for uh, changing the uh, color mode of your application so all these are already pre-packed with this uh, ui library so as you can see i'm already getting the background so what i would like to do i would like to try some uh, tailwind class to verify that yes indeed it is working so let's try class let's make it text to excel let's make it our text center uh, and i'll just wrap the div in a grid and place content as center so let's see what happens and also i'll give h 
screen. So as you can see, indeed our Tailwind classes are working. So now let's see what else uh, our Nuxt UI offers. So what we'd be doing is basically we'd be looking at uh, the theming option and also we'll be seeing some of the configurations. So you might be asking where is the Tailwind config? So for that, you can write your Tailwind config inside the tailwind.config in a TypeScript such as like this. So let's see the theming tab. So I would say the theming option is pretty limited, but uh, you can uh, do a lot of thing with it. So in the colors, basically the whole uh, UI is based on two colors from the Tailwind colors uh, palette. So one is, would be your primary colors and it, it basically contains a whole range of your uh, color shades. And then another would be uh, the darker shade, darker color. So in, if you are seeing this page, so in this page, the color would be, the primary color would be green. And then uh, the dark, uh, the, the background colors and other colors would be uh, green, would be the cool one, right? So based on your color uh, selection choice, it would be basically inverted. So let me take you to the customize color page. So you see, you can use any color from these uh, from these color palettes. Basically, what you have to do is just you have to set the uh, primary and gray uh, and, the, and the and the color of the gray, and you you can just use these names. Uh, all these names are for your for your next UI. Also, you can add the custom colors as well. We'll see that in a bit. So let's scroll down and let's see uh, what else do we need to know. So yeah, to, for in the app.config.ts, which would be your main um, config file for, for this UI uh, customization, you can also individually um, add the colors for your uh, particular of your particular component so you can see the components name and then you can use that so let's uh, create that file and let's uh, let's let's do that so what we'll do we'll create a file we'll name it app app dot config dot ts and here we'll basically uh, having this define app config and here we would have the option ui and inside the ui you you can then define the primary color so let's uh, say orange and then also you can say gray and for gray let's choose cool for now right so that is uh, said now let's see if we see any changes here so we have changed the primary color to orange color palette and then we have changed the gray to cool and now if you see we have the we do have indeed the gray color, uh, sorry, orange color. And you can see if we hover over it, it, it is changing to a different shade of um, orange. So yeah, that is pretty neat. So what you have to do is basically add the add this to property and yeah, we have changed the colors. So we can also change it to something else just to prove our point. Maybe let's say blue and you can see we are having the blue color. So it's, let's see what else we need, uh, we are interested in. So we have already added the app config and for other element, if you need to, uh, for other component, if you need to add any class, you can do that in the app config for globally. And you can also do that inside the component. We'll just see in a bit. So yeah, so that is basically uh, how you configure your uh, next UI. Now let's see uh, some of the examples and we'll try to uh, recreate those as well. So uh, this this example is pretty neat. It actually what it does it uses the U color mode color package of Nuxt and it basically changes the uh, dark mode uh, in your application. So let's copy this code and let's see uh, if we if it, if it if it works in our app dot view. So on top of that, I will take the script and let's make it set up and set the line as ts and inside that let's put it and so we basically have the now the color mode now let's copy the other part of the code and let's see uh, if we can if it works in our page i'll just remove the hello world and let's see let's go here so we have the little icon so icon is coming from the from the button itself so in the button it also takes uh on the icon uh, props in the icon props we can just set any icon from 
the icon is library so wherever you need to use a icon you can just go in this library and this library has more than 11,000 icons from all over the open source icon libraries no matter what the you what the icon library you need if it is open source most probably will find it here so what you, what you have to do basically uh, you should start with i and then you have to uh, give the package name and then you have to give the icon name and then uh, th this is this part is basically the icon name this part is the package name and this is just a, a prefix so once you do that you uh, you can then use any icon from here uh, for for all your components so now if i click on it it should turn it to white and as you can see it it indeed does that so if you need the color color mode options in your application with this package it's just a few lines of code this is just one example of using uh, some of the given component so in the example you have seen that we are using the button components in the button we are passing props uh, and then we are dynamically rendering based on that is dark variable so if the is, is dark is dark then we are showing the solid moon otherwise we are showing the sun so just like that uh, you can also use these components now the question might be why do you find all these props how do you know what props do it accepts so the first way so you can just go to the documentation so for example let's say i want to see for accordions so what you need to do is in the right side you can see there is this uh, option called slots so if you go there these are the slots api and you can see all the slots so there's this default slots and then there would be other slots item slots so item would be this and it is pretty nicely written i would say if you read, just read the documentation then you don't need to see even this video so then you can see the props the first props would be the ui so that this ui is basically used to customize your component as your likings but i would say if you are creating an application and if you want to keep your design consistent use it inside the app.config.ts then you need then you see the items item basically takes the array of objects and in that objects what you need to give is you can see here as well and you can also see the types so i would say the best way would be to just go to the documentation and if you have access to the code the code is pretty uh, simple you can just go to their um, vs code and uh, you can just open their repository and then you can just open so just like this so if you open their vs code and if you open it in vs code just like if you just change the com from dev it will open it up in a intuitive editor and from there you can just go to the component definition and it is written in pretty uh, normal way so uh, each component is a separate sfc so you can just go there and you can just uh, see for you, yourself so you can see runtime inside the runtime you, ha you have the components and you can see that you have this data table how the data table is created then you can see the elements for example let's say i'm interested in button so this is how the button is created pretty much simple how you basically do your component creation nothing special here so yeah so this is where you get all your information while we are at it i would also like to share that if you are using next ui then you don't even need a form validation uh, package because it already comes with a pretty much good form validation solution so if you go inside the form and if you go inside the form component you'd see then uh, it has the built-in validation and you can basically use uh, Yav, Zod, Zoe or any schema uh, almost all these schema library to validate your state so how the form validation is done is basically very simple so first what they are doing they are first creating a form state where all the form field would be defined and then there is this validate function which is getting triggered on the form validate so you have to pass a props and you have to pass this function so whenever input field is focused this functions run and this will basically uh tells you that what uh, this is where you basically do your validation which is not a good way i would say because uh let's say you have tens of hundreds of uh fields and then you have those fields in somewhere else as well so in that case you have you will have a lot of code repetition so instead of what i would say i would say you use one of these I, I would suggest you use Zod because most of our, in our project we may be using Zod for our backend validations as well. 
So you scroll down to the Zod uh, section and you can see it is pretty much simple. So what they're doing is basically now you have a you have the schema. So what schema is basically it's a Zod object and here you basically what you do is um, you add your uh, validation. So you have the email and password just like before what we did we had this uh, validated function and inside that we are checking uh, manually what if uh, if that field is empty or not or if the field has an email or not. So now Zod is doing all the heavy lifting and what we can do is we can just pass this schema as a schema props here in the form so which is totally awesome I didn't know about this until I started using it and when I saw the form feature is coming I said wow so I was uh, before I was using this v validate package and now I don't have to do that because next UI is already coming with this uh, form validation library like that uh, I, another thing I like about this uh, particular package is that it comes with a pretty good uh, data table solutions so if you are building a data grid for your application chances are you would be using this most of the time because this thing this data table is so common uh, amongst the application that you cannot just live without it before i started using this particular package i had my own data table so uh, when i saw the code and i i i thought I should just give it a try and when I uh, started using it, it's basically the same how I did it uh, with the Tailwind uh, headless UI but now it is in more nicer way and I don't have to manage it myself because I can focus on more important stuff that business logic and, and all that. So yeah, so you, you can also take a look at this awesome uh, data table component. Apart from that, you also get models, you also get the slide overs. I, I, I've almost stopped using the model and um, started uh, using the slide overs. I think I think it looks more good. So yeah, so these kind of a uh, component you'll also get. So that is pretty much what Next UI is and how it can help you to uh, make your day a little bit easier. Thanks for joining me on this journey through Next UI. Don't forget to subscribe and always stay blessed, stay happy. Bye.